there has been a lot of debate about endarterectomy versus stenting in cases with severe uh, carotid stenosis. They're probably at equipoise, I think, uh, in, in terms of the, 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 the utility. I, I will say at our institution, we're doing more endarterectomies than we are stents. We reserve stents for patients uh, that have a significant number of medical comorbidities. Uh, uh, such as heart disease, cancer, or in patients that have had radiation to their neck and they've, they've got stenosis of their carotid artery, that, that stenosis is usually related to myointimal hyperplasia and it's a smooth stenosis and we can get a very nice dilatation with the balloon and treat it with a stent. Plus, we don't have to operate on a vessel that's been radiated and stuck to everything around it where you increase the risk of lower cranial neuropathies. Uh, uh, the, the, when we looked at CEA versus stent uh, uh, in uh, symptomatic stenosis greater than 60%, the 30-day risk of stroke or death with carotid endarterectomy is uh, about 4% and about 10% with the stent. And that's why we have now leaned more towards the uh, CEA for carotid stenosis. That being said, there's an increased risk for having an MI, but I have found that we can alleviate that risk by aggressive preoperative evaluation and medical management. <clears throat> the 30-day uh, risk of disabling stroke or death with CEA is 1.5% versus then 3.4%, and the relative risk is 2.2. Uh, so with that, uh, as I said, we lean more towards stenting. I can envision a day uh, when we're also doing more stenting for carotid endarterectomy, let's face it, everybody wants something that's minimally invasive and it's certainly more desirable. But that being said, uh, my patients with carotid endarterectomy leave the hospital the day after surgery. So uh, the length of hospitalization is essentially the same as well.